All right, all. We're on day two of week 31. So we're going to go ahead and start. Oh, let me do sound. We're going to go ahead and start with this. Um, basically, uh, we left off with poultry. So I want you guys to see. I found a video of what I was describing as far as uh, how the chickens are processed. I think this is really important for you to watch um, from start to finish. So um, you can understand, you know, where the food comes from and the process of how they go about this. So this is a poultry plant in the United States. This is a couple of years old, but this is generally, I've been to the Tyson uh, poultry plant um, in Arkansas. I went to Tyson University um, where they teach you everything about the food they produce. So let's go ahead and start this. Whether cooking at home or eating out, chicken and turkey are an all-American favorite. Baked, roasted, grilled, or fried. Perhaps the juicy dark meat of a turkey leg for the holidays. Or a plate of chicken wings served up for a ball game on TV. But like many of our favorite foods, we often don't think about all the hard work that takes place before it reaches our plate. The U.S. Poultry and Egg Association invites you to join us for a behind-the-scenes look at today's high-tech, highly efficient poultry processing plants, where the industry proudly earns its reputation for producing one of the safest, most wholesome, and affordable foods in the world. We begin as the birds are collected from the family farms and delivered for processing. Processing plants are typically located near the farms where the birds have been raised, which serves to minimize stress and discomfort to the birds during the delivery phase. Poultry companies must follow strict guidelines established by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for the stunning and slaughter of chickens and turkeys. And while consumers may prefer not to think about what happens at this step, Rest assured, poultry companies make every effort to treat the animals in a controlled manner that is both humane and respectful. Dim lighting relaxes the birds, keeping them calm and preventing possible injury. Next, they are transported to an area of the plant where they are immediately stunned and rendered unconscious. Currently, there are two approaches to stunning, electrical and controlled atmosphere stunning. Electrical stunning is achieved by exposing the birds to a mild electrical current. Controlled atmosphere stunning uses either a mixture of inert gases or concentrations of carbon dioxide to lower oxygen levels. While each stunning method has its advantages, both render the birds unconscious and incapable of feeling pain. Both are considered equally humane, and both are widely accepted by independent animal welfare organizations such as the United Nations World Organization for Animal Health and the American Association of Avian Pathologists. After the birds are rendered insensible to pain, they pass by a sharp blade that severs arteries in the neck. In the next processing step, feathers are removed with hot water and mechanical picking devices. Inside each of these picking machines are hundreds of rubber fingers, efficiently removing the feathers. The bird is now ready for the removal of internal organs. This step is highly automated and a long way from the old days of workers standing shoulder to shoulder using only knives and scissors. Innovative technology continues to be introduced to eliminate many of the repetitive tasks of the past while assuring even greater food safety and product quality. Raw meat, like any fresh agricultural product, including fruit and vegetables, may harbor naturally occurring bacteria. Some bacteria have the potential to make people sick if raw food products are improperly stored, handled, or undercooked. Processing plants use a variety of intervention strategies at key control points to reduce bacteria counts. For example, the carcass is quickly cooled in a cold water or a cold air chiller to inhibit the growth of bacteria. Other strategies may include the use of food-grade antimicrobial rinses, which are recognized by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as a safe and effective way to inhibit the growth of foodborne pathogens on raw product. Food safety oversight is also conducted at poultry processing facilities by the Food Safety and Inspection Service, a public health agency of the USDA. 
Federal inspectors are on duty at all times during plant operation to inspect every bird. FSIS and plant officials routinely test product for pathogens to measure the effectiveness of bacteria control efforts. Plants must meet or exceed standards set forth by the USDA in this regard. If food safety concerns do arise, federal inspectors are authorized to halt production until the issue is fully resolved. Another important aspect of food safety is sanitation. In fact, each day an entire operating shift is dedicated to sanitation. This involves washing down walls and floors and disinfecting plant equipment with approved cleaning agents. Each day before a plant can resume operation, federal inspectors must review and approve sanitation protocols to assure strict adherence. Food safety is critical to maintaining the reputation of the U.S. poultry industry for consumer confidence and trust. Collectively, proper handling, interventions, sanitation, and microbial testing all lead to improved food safety for chicken and turkey products. We hope this presentation has helped you. All right, so <clears throat> just to give you guys, you guys an idea of the process for chicken, um, just give it just a thought. The one plant I went to butchers a million pounds of chicken a day. So you guys saw how they just get to the first part where they eviscerate it, or I think, that's, I, think I pronounced that correctly. correctly. But um, they didn't even cut it up. So from the point where you saw those chickens raw, where they took the innards out, basically from there, it, they'd figure out what they want to do with the chickens. Um, so they might have an inspector that like looks at them, like a person will see it or a computer and see if it has any deformities. And once it goes down this conveyor, if it's deformed, it goes to the right. And that's what's going to be chopped and processed. If it's perfectly healthy and looks great, it'll go to the left. And then that might be cut down into eight piece chicken or that might be sold whole. Um, depending on what it is, these processing plants are massive. Um, just imagine like the size of North Central. <clears throat> There's the Tyson plant I went to was about three or four North Centrals. It was absolutely huge. And they just bring in, you know, like I said, millions of pounds of chicken a day and process it. So just some food for thought. Um, white and, so uh, sorry, as far as composition of poultry goes, you have white and dark meat. They have different nutritional values. Um, most domestic birds that are farm raised have white and dark meat. So that'll be your, your chicken, your um, geese, duck, not, not duck. So chicken, turkey, um, most of the smaller birds that fly. So your ducks and stuff like that, even the ones that are farm raised, I believe, um, they have mainly all dark meat. So if you think about how a chicken uses its different muscles. So you have the chicken wings, the chicken breast meat, they don't fly. Um, typically, like you saw in this video, they don't leave that room and they don't really have a need to fly. So the white, they don't get as much blood pumped in there. So that's pretty much the process of it. Like if they're not using those muscles, they get big because they feed them a ton, um, but they're not flying, but they do walk and they run everywhere. So they have more dark meat on the bottom. Same thing with the turkey. If you catch a wild turkey, it has predominantly dark meat throughout because wild turkeys actually fly different, you know, not very long distances, but they do fly. Same thing with duck, um, geese, you know, those kind of, those types of birds, they fly. So they use more of that breast meat for actual working. Um, but the, the nutritional value of them is <clears throat> they might have a lot more iron in it. Um, they'll have darker meat because of the blood that's getting pumped through there. Um, they'll have more fat. So like the dark meat tension, Tend, uh, tentatively has more fat in it than the breast meat. So you could, you know, it's two different types of uh, cooking methods needed for both. Whether cooking. Okay. So as far as this goes, this goes through the different bird types. So you have chicken, they have white and dark meat, um, descriptions of them, depending on the size. So young chickens are Cornish hens, broilers, fryers, roasters, capons, uh, mature chicken is hen, fowl, baking chicken, stewing chicken. So the older the chicken, the different application. Well, let me move me up here. Older the chicken, the different applications. So like I said, the more it uses its muscles, the harder they're going to be to cook. 
So you want to cook them in a braise or a stew, cook them for a longer time to break them down. Um, turkey, typically white and dark meat if they're domesticated, farm raised. Um, roast, young hens, young toms, yearling turkeys, mature old turkey. Um, I mean, you can still cook it. That's more of what they use for like canned turkey. A lot of the manufacturers that make soups and pre-cooked items will use the older birds or the ones that aren't as pretty um, for those things. Same, the same thing with like fruit and vegetables. And we talked about like you have these beautiful apples. Those are going to be the ones that are sold in the big pile in the deli or in the, <clears throat> the produce area. But then the ones that have blemishes and stuff like that, that's what they're going to put in applesauce. Okay, that's what they're going to cook for your McDonald's apple pie. You know, those are the ones that are going to go to stuff like that. Um, duck, only dark meat. Um, they're really good seared, roasted. They have a lot of fat in them, like a lot of fat. So they're, they're good fry. I mean, you can fry the whole bird. Quail, dark meat only. <clears throat> um, they're very good, you know, depending on how you cook them. It's a, a roasting type thing. Composition of poultry, fowl, bird, white meat, little muscle use, breast meat, low calories, low fat. They cook faster. Great for grilling and sauteing. Um, the dark meat has roasting poultry, retain moisture, have a lot of fat under the skin, uh, basted with stock and butter. I don't like how they have these things set up, but the dark meat you're used heavily. So your legs and thighs are used a lot more. They're higher in calories and fat, but they have a lot more flavor to them. Um, they just need more time to cook. So when we did our um, Cajun style chicken thighs, we deboned them. So boneless, skinless, but they did take a little bit longer, but we cooked them in the rice. So they stayed really moist and juicy and delicious. Um, but I prefer to cook chicken thighs. Like if you're doing barbecue, do a chicken thigh because they, they skewer and roast or grill beautifully. Um, okay, the different types of poultry. So you have domestic poultry, readily available, less costly. Free range poultry, late, raised in large yards, Space to roam and exercise, dark colored meat, different flavor and texture. Um, I live next door to somebody who raises chickens that just roam everywhere. They eat whatever they want. Um, they fly somewhat because they can fly short distances um, and they run. They have free space. When you have, you know, two billion chickens packed into a warehouse that are being, you know, fed and get their vitamin packages and all that stuff, they don't move. You know, so they don't have a lot of, even the dark meat on those is still not that dark. But if you see the dark meat of a chicken that is pasture raised, um, it's completely different, but it tastes completely different as well. Um, game birds, these are sometimes raised on farms, sometimes hunted. This would be your partridge, pheasant, squab, duck, goose, quail. Um, yeah, food service operations on that. So yeah, these are just things they look for. Soft, smooth, pliable skin, breastbone, cartilage, flexible, flesh is tender. Um, if you have brittle bones, that means the chicken was not raised properly. Um, and then, yeah, storage, 41 degrees below or, or below. Um, freeze if it needs to be, thaw out properly. And then um, as far as like sending stuff back or not buying stuff at the grocery store, if it's discolored at all, like if it's got dark yellow skin or it's slimy, or it has um, purple or green discoloration around the neck or wing tips, don't buy it. That means it's blood's pooling. It's got some age on it, um, stickiness. Uh, it's stanky, you know, make sure the packaging's in, intact. And then um, as far as frozen stuff goes, um, look for front signs of frost, <clears throat> leaky packages, those kind of things. No one else is on here. Oh yeah, as far as cutting, we're gonna get into the cutting. We're gonna keep going with this next week um, as far as like different chicken recipes, um, breaking it down and then how it's how different game birds are used. So we're gonna stop this one here. Um, then we'll continue on next week with poultry and then we'll get into a couple more chapters before, uh, before summer. But this one we'll go through like how to fabricate a chicken and then I'll go through like what our recipe is gonna be this week. All right, well. Thank you all. Uh, I will see you later.